The party says much of England is being plunged into darkness because councils are dimming or switching off streetlights to save money. Their research suggests the changes have been made in three quarters of local authorities. Some councils argue they can save money and reduce their carbon footprint, as Joe Black reports. Midnight and Brentwood is plunged into darkness. Only the Christmas lights continue to shine. This report says for most of the night, 83% of the streetlights are turned off here in Essex. For some, it feels unsafe. You can't go out without a torch. It's quite intimidating to sort of go out and not know what's around the corner. I feel safe with the lights on, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. No, I don't think they should be doing it to save money. I think it's an absolute disgrace. The county council here says Essex is mainly a rural county and the switch-off helps reduce emissions and save millions of pounds. And figures from councils that responded to this survey show Essex is not alone. Since 2010, nine times as many streetlights are now dimmed or switched off. Back then it was 148,000. Today it is 1.3 million. What we've been calling on the government to do, which is to give councils longer term budgets, they can then invest up front to save money later on. But the Conservatives argue some local authorities are actually investing in new lights that are more efficient. Councils are having to make difficult choices. I hope they consider um, road safety, I hope they consider the, you know, the care of an individual, but I'm sure there will be times in a day and in certain locations where street lighting can be turned off. As less money comes from the central government pot, council budgets get tighter, leaving residents to wonder how much longer they'll be left in the dark. Joe Black, BBC News. Well, with us now is Matilda Wellbelove, whose brother Archie was killed on a road where the lights had been switched off just days earlier. Good morning, Matilda. Hello, morning. Tell us what happened to your brother. Um, he was walking along a road um, after a night out, and um, the street lights were turned off five days before to save money. And um, a taxi was driving along the road and didn't see him, and he, he got hit by a car and he was killed. This is in Warwickshire, where yeah, he was in a Warwickshire, student. Yeah, Warwickshire, yeah. Um, and he'd, it's a road that he'd walked on plenty of times before. If he'd known, do you think, that the lights weren't going to be on, would he have been on that road even? Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think he would have. It, it's a road that's frequently used by loads of students because yeah. it um, links Leamington Spa to Warwick. So it's used quite a lot by students every day, really. What do you think about the idea in general, then, of, of either dimming lights or turning street lights off? Do you think it just shouldn't happen at all, or the council should be more selective? I understand that they need to, they're under pressure to make cuts, but I think that they should um, think about it more where they're actually going to make cuts. Mm. Um, and what about the coroner? Because um, the coroner talked about it. Didn't he? Yeah, the coroner said that um, the street lighting was one of the main factors, and the coroner basically said that if the lights were on, they think that he would still be here with us today. Mm. And in fact, the police had to wait for the lights to be turned yeah, on. Yeah, they had to wait quite a few hours for um, the lights to be turned back on, even s just so that they could find his body mm. and do a proper examination. Yeah, it must be a devastating impact for your family. Yeah, we, the reason that it's upsetting to us about how they're still carrying on and they still haven't switched them back on is because we don't want, we know it's a frequently used road and we don't want any other families to have to go through what we've been through. Uh, were there any kind of warnings? There's no warnings or anything on the road at all or are there even now? Um, I, I don't think so, no. Yeah. Mm. So what would your message be to councils? Because according to these statistics from the Labour Party, three quarters of councils now are, are either doing it or thinking of uh, of doing what? What do you think they should actually be doing about street lighting? I think they should be doing. Um, they should be looking around at the towns, w see which roads are frequently used and which ones aren't. Do a survey, see mm. if pe how many people use that. Just, I don't think that they should turn them off on a road where they know that there is any kind of risk where someone could get harmed or killed. Mm. Okay. Well, Matilda, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thanks for sharing your story with us. Um, well. And Warwickshire Council um, have said we wouldn't want to discuss street lighting in this context, but our thoughts are with the well beloved family at this time of year. And a statement from the local government association as well saying decisions to reduce street lighting not taken without consideration given to the likely impact on road and community safety. Councils do monitor safety statistics and act if presented with evidence of a public safety risk. It is just coming up to 7.43. This is Breakfast and BBC News. Our main story is here this morning.